The Forza Motorsport franchise, including the offshoot Forza Horizon series, is the biggest racing game franchise in the video game industry today. Every time one of these games is released, it's a really big deal. Millions of sales, tons of people actively playing the game online, engaging in the community, whether it be inside the game world or on content creation avenues, a ton of different esports competitions all over the globe, and it's basically become the de facto car RPG franchise that Gran Turismo once was. Yet for someone like me, who loves all kinds of racing games, from simulators to arcade stuff, I find Forza completely unplayable. Now, don't take this the wrong way, I really appreciate everything Forza offers on paper. I've been a huge advocate for more and more games, especially racing sims, to have a, a comprehensive career mode where just there's a ton of shit to do even if your buddies aren't lying or it's not a league race day. Forza offers that. There's a huge car and track roster, unmatched in any other game. Forza offers that. There's a ton of customization options built into the game, like a paint booth, like an auction house, like the ability to sell setups for credits in the game. No other game offers that, Forza does. It's great. But as someone with real-world racing experience, Forza has to make sense for me to drive for me to enjoy it. Forza makes no sense for me to drive. In fact, it's the worst driving game out there. And that's really weird, because you have to consider that this game has the most resources and money and funding and time spent on it. Some of this stuff, I don't understand how they're messing up. Forza's cockpit view, and this spans across both the Motorsport and Horizon games, is borderline unusable. Your seat position is often too high, it's like your driver's 8 feet tall and scraping his head against the roof, and your view angle is tilted too far downwards, so the majority of your monitor is spent drawing the cockpit with the driver staring at the gauge cluster, as opposed to looking straight out the window. It's like nobody on the dev team has actually sat inside a race car or even a passenger vehicle. For them to get something so basic wrong is really worrying. There's also no options to adjust your viewpoint like there are in modern racing sims, where you have buttons for moving the seat forward, backwards, up or down, or even tilting your driver's neck up or down. In modern race cars with a sequential gearbox, Forza adds a slight delay when you shift up or down. It's really noticeable in their open wheel stuff because you're used to in other racing sims or just watching the footage on TV, drivers able to bang through the gears like nothing. In Forza there's this weird delay. It's like everything's been modeled as an H-pattern car with auto-clutch, even cars that aren't H-pattern cars. Forza's cars, especially with a wheel, often feel really, really sluggish to drive. They don't change direction very fast, which indicates a problem with how inertia is modeled in the game. Good example of this, James Hinchcliffe, Sector 1 of Circuit of the Americas, as he goes to the S-turn section, he can steer from left to right without pausing and centering the wheel momentarily. Basically, the car moves as fast as he's able to turn his hands on the wheel. He doesn't let the car rest by centering the wheel and waiting for it. This doesn't happen in the Forza Motorsport physics engine. Same car, same track, same sector. You'll notice as this guy goes to the S-turn section, he has to pause and center the wheel in between corners. I'll call it out here turns in, centers, turns in, centers, turns in. That additional third of a second after each corner where he has to wait for the car to gather itself before changing directions, that's not even remotely realistic, and it's what makes all the cars in the Forza Motorsport series, again, as well as Horizon, feel really, really sluggish to drive. Forza has the exact same tire issues as iRacing, except they've put a band-aid over it. Just like in iRacing, Forza's tires are too peaky, so if you get any amount of slip in the tires, you're just dead sideways, there's no in-between. However, whereas in iRacing you just outright wreck, 
in Forza, to kind of compensate for this and make things easier, they let you ride out the slide for what feels like ages. Good example here in the Lotus 49, I break a bit too hard entering this corner, and after the car steps out, it takes me basically the entire corner to catch it. By comparison, Alex Rossi's going to make the same kind of mistake here going into a left-hand corner. He's going to get a bit too hard on the brakes, the back end's going to come around, it's over in less than a second, and he just continues on his way. Bit of a counter steer, and whoops. But it's over just like that. Forza, by comparison, if you get into a slide like this, you have enough time to contemplate your life choices, and usually there's a second or even a third slide associated with it, like you see right here. If you don't underdrive the car like you would in iRacing, this is basically what you have to deal with every single corner. <laughs> Forza's biggest problem though is with the front end snapping and just being completely unpredictable. Here's the short layout at Hockenheim in a GT3 McLaren. I go into a gentle left-hander and ease on the brake to prepare for the next corner, and the rear end just completely steps out on me for no reason. It's like the front end of the car doesn't have a front sway bar. By comparison, same car, same track, same corner. Lucky I was actually able to find this. Takes the corner, gives it a bit of brake, nothing happens. Like it's like the corner wasn't even there. The front end is just completely unpredictable. And it's not just when entering a corner either, it's also when powering out. I apologize for the 4x3 video, I don't know why the fuck it recorded this way. Check out this crazy shit, Lotus 49, final corner at Brands Hatch. Get on the brakes pretty hard and send the car into a four-wheel drift. And as I'm sliding, the front tires bite as I get back on the throttle and pull me towards the sand. Slowed down at half speed, I'm drifting, I'm drifting, I'm drifting, I apply throttle. Oh my god, the car's going straight. This is something you experience in front-wheel drive touring car racing, and it's happening in the Lotus 49. In fact, I've done this in my own car. Whoops, got on the power too early, and uh, this is not the trajectory of the corner, and that wall is getting mighty close. I expect that to happen in my front-wheel drive mini stock, not my Lotus 49. And it's for these reasons that when I see all the accolades this game gets, I just laugh.